Hey, what's up everybody? Just doing a quick little experiment here today with the Ventura for my wood burner. Um, I thought this thing was fine and great until we turned it into a monster burner one day and noticed that inside of here is a double vortex, a double barrel spiral vortex right inside this throat. Delicious the Blair was the one to quickly point that out that the reason it's happening is because you got the two air flows colliding in this area here and you could see that because of the combustion of the propane you can't see it without that but because we ignited a fire in here we were able to observe the flow path and we witnessed these inefficiencies so I decided to build a better one but I wanted to make sure that it was in fact a better Ventura because What's the point of installing it if it doesn't outperform this one? So I built this little cheap meter and we're gonna put it to the test. And in addition to that, I wanna show the advantages of having the horn. You'll be amazed at um, how much of an increase you get from adding this horn. This is an absolute must. This is like 40% of the power of the Ventura. So let's uh, shut up and check it out here. I'm gonna go ahead and start off. We'll see what it does right here for both units. My bad. There, that's better. Okay, so you see what we're getting there, just under that mark. That mark's kind of a high point. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on high. And this is a four more streamlined system. Definitely a very powerful configuration. Give you a better example of what's going on here. We're basically creating this cone and everything behind this cone the air molecules are stripped away from the high velocity air and a void is created and that's how the vacuum is induced because we are stripping away air molecules. Typically they would bounce off of each other whereas in this case anytime an air molecule goes in this direction it's ripped away in the slipstream. So that's what we tried to achieve. The, where this is positioned is very important. A lot of the times these are adjustable. I chose to go with um, what I felt intuitively would be the most high performance setting. And okay, so we'll start off again. We'll try it right here at the medium position. Make sure it's right on that mark there. I accidentally moved it a hair. Definitely quite a draft there. Well, you see what we got. I should have marked that. But I noticed during construction that just putting my hand here, look at that. You hold it just right. So just by fidgeting around like this is what proved to me that the cone is a must. So let's turn it on high. So there you go it did not perform as well as this unit despite the double barrel turbulence that we were seeing however this unit has a downdraft cone or however this one has a divergent nozzle on it so let's attach this divergent nozzle using something i call a, a steel couple Pretty interesting way of attaching two pieces of steel pipe 
you get some steel foil. It doesn't have to be copper. So there it is, fellas. You ever find yourselves in a pinch? This is a very good coupling system. It's stiffer than you think. I added um, two or three of these one time to a connection, and it was stiff as a baseball bat. So let's give this a shot. <clears throat> we'll start once again, medium position. Now this is where we were with the medium position before. Tremendous increase. We were way down here. This dot represents where that Ventura was on medium, I think. Huge difference. Now watch this. It completely pegs it. Okay, so what's the purpose of this thing? Why did I build it? Well, this is basically a fire breathing fan. It will be powering my heat in this shop. I have a burner over here that I'm about ready to throw back in commission for the year. And along the floor, I have this heat pipe this thing gets up to about 190 degrees at the discharge of the building and it's about 200 degrees right in this area about 300 right here so it adds as a substantial heat exchange like kind of a radiator action rather than just blast all the hot air out this right here is a cyclone that's used to separate ash and dirt out of the stream and as a um, I think they call it a reheater a reclaimer that's what they call it this lets me get some more heat out of the exhaust oftentimes I run this thing at a level where fire is actually shooting down this pipe so we're gonna be cutting this top off getting down inside of there and cleaning that out and I want to put a stand pipe in there so that debris that may make it through here doesn't have the opportunity to fall directly down into that. So this thing will be able to pull hot exhaust gases through it. Typically I have ran it directly through the fan. Built it about 10 minutes one night because um, the one I had on there broke down on us. Me and Shooty were out here working on a machine for a customer and we had to have heat right away. This thing ran for about a year and the exhaust gas from the burner went directly into the blower. But over time, build up on the blades would cause it to vibrate and get so loud that it just became annoying, but it would still work. I'm actually amazed at how well it worked and the fact that it was able to just breathe smoke without building up with creosote as long as you kept the fire hot, it, it would run all winter. You'd have to clean it up next spring, but you would get an entire season out of this thing. And I'm talking eight hour to 16 hour days, seven days a week. It's amazing that it, it held out that long. The only reason I decommissioned it is because of the noise, it's just so annoying. This thing, you can't even hear it when it's outside. It's 100% silent. All you can hear is the air being pulled into the burner itself. This here has an annoying hum. If you've seen any of my old videos that took place in the winter time, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. So don't have to worry about that anymore. Also, they're prone to failure right in the middle of things. So I don't like that. The only thing I don't like about this blower is that it is a universal motor. So it's brushed. 
I got a little visitor here pulling down the motor for me. It is a two-stage commercial vacuum blower. Uh, very powerful. As I said, it can produce four PSIs of boost. And that was determined with this actual gauge that was made for engines to determine boost. So it is a very impressive blower. Um, I can't remember the power consumption. I'm not really too worried about that. But I'm gonna be throwing this thing into service within the next day or two. So it's gonna be kinda of cool to see fire and smoke coming out the other end of this thing. No fire, of course, but we're gonna see some uh, very tarry gases blowing through this bad boy. And now I don't have to worry about buildup. This thing's all metal. So I can literally take it and throw it in the fire and burn all the creosote out of it or just take a rosebud torch like this thing right here give it a quick touch up get it red hot real quick and uh, we'll be ready to roll again so definitely into it now I don't have a TIG welder so it was very hard to weld this thin metal extremely tough so for the most part can see what we've got there just a uh, concentric chamber and a barrel straight down the middle there that's where the smoke and the fire travels or just the smoke in this case this thing could breathe fire definitely has the power we turn this one into a burner and I will um, try and leave a link in the description of this thing it puts out a beautiful flame about this big very powerful burner we might keep it around just for that purpose alone but it like i said it's got that dual vortice and i guarantee you if this meter was a little more effective it would show that this is way more powerful than this unit we could see it on the medium test but even on high so it's worthy of installing it so it passed the test I just wanted to be sure, so I slapped this together. I didn't want to take, you know, an hour or something building some something cool to look at. I just want to know, okay, I built this thing. Is it worth putting it on? Because what if this one was better? Then what do I got to say? I want to save as much brush as I can. I don't want to burn up the brushes on that motor. They're about that long, and they're about that wide and about that thick. So they're massive brushes, but still, it worries me. This thing's going to be doing a lot of, uh, a lot of running. So, next time you see this thing, it's going to have smoke blowing out the other end. I'm going to go ahead and post this video with just a conclusion of the air horn being a total necessity. You have to put an air horn on. And I say that because they sell these online set up like this without the air horn. It just looks like this. Just little handheld units. But um, I knew putting that horn on there would make a huge difference. And we actually got to see it with my little cheapo gauge. So, all right, I'm rambling. I'm shutting up. I'm out of here, fellas.